Today, we'd like to bring attention back to an urgent issue that the media addressed this past February and seems to have moved on from, but we at Animals Today have not. Between December 2022 and February 2023, 23 whales were found dead along the East Coast. The number of deceased whales beached along the East Coast in 2023 is now at 27, according to NOAA. That's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. While that number might not be record-setting yet this year, it is far too many lives lost at far too rapid of a pace. The majority of these whale deaths were those of humpback whales, a species whose population has only just started to bounce back after hunting them became illegal, finally, in 1985. Various explanations are given by experts and various commentators on why the pace of whale deaths have been accelerated for the early part of this year. For starters, an obvious cause has been vessel strikes. Cargo ships are traversing in the same waters with whales more often than they were before. Warming sea temperatures are felt to be contributing to changing the whales' migration patterns, along with closer approaches to the shore. And cargo ships are growing ever larger and are in greater use. In the New York, New Jersey area alone, there's been a 27% increase in shipping traffic from 2019 to 2022. However, what I find suspicious is the nature of the reporting about the recent cluster of whale deaths from December 2022 to February 2023. For example, the New York Times reports that Quote, for more than half of all whales found stranded, investigators are not able to determine a definitive cause of death. You know, these days when I read or hear the phrase like cannot be definitively determined or something like no conclusive evidence, I immediately think, well, you're going to have to do a little better than that for me to accept that that is the real state of affairs. Who are these so-called experts and reporters? On what data are they relying Do they have an unstated agenda? Is there willful neglect about really trying to find out? You know, after all the untruths and outright lies around COVID, sorry, but it's nearly impossible to know whom to trust anymore. And I'm certainly not gonna accept at face value proclamations like these. And you know something else? Phrases like no conclusive evidence have another effect, which is to make the reader stop thinking and wondering about the question itself. Like, dear reader, don't look any further into this as there's nothing you could do anyway. So continuing, how, how is it possible that for more than half of all whales found dead, a cause of death cannot be determined? Now, you should know these deaths have coincided with the newly approved development of approximately 12 wind farms from the coasts of Massachusetts to the shores of Virginia. New Jersey has one of the most aggressive goals for quickly building offshore wind farm construction by 2035. And they also already have the most whale deaths so far this year. The United States Department of Energy released a statement in April responding to this theory, conveying that the link between developing offshore wind farms and recent whale deaths is, quote, misinformation, and asserted that there's no evidence to support the idea. In their statement, they also emphasize the importance of quickly building wind farms when it comes to addressing our climate crisis. So we know the goals and agenda of the DOE. And as before, the use of the term misinformation has become even worse than meaningless to me. When I hear that, I think, you are lying. You are trying to unethically change or slant the narrative. And sure, working toward cleaner energy, most people think is important, but at what cost? Developing clean energy should not and need not endanger a population of innocent, majestic whales. So in a minute, we're going to look at two important factors, construction noise and increased vessel traffic. Both of these are known to endanger whales. But first, let me just tell you this. Whale and Dolphin Conservation, a nonprofit working to ensure that every whale and dolphin can live freely and safely, goes into further detail on the ways in which offshore wind farms could harm whales. They share this quote. 
noise, vessel traffic, entanglement, displacement from habitat, changes to prey availability and therefore feeding and breeding activity, increased disturbance, interaction with existing risks, and possibly more that are currently unknown. Offshore wind farms will be in place for decades and the potential effects on whales and dolphins could last many years, impacting multiple generations. Risks to vulnerable populations are especially concerning given the long time spans needed for their recovery. Now, this is a group I personally trust, certainly more than the Department of Energy, that's for sure. And so when they say the impact may be severe but are not fully known, to me that means proceed with extreme caution. And yet the industry and the government thinking is that we can't attribute all the deaths to the construction and we cannot be even 100% sure that any deaths were caused by the construction. And so don't worry for now. We're just going to go full steam ahead with construction. But what about the whales? Well, try not to think too hard about them. Okay, so more on noise and increased vessel traffic, starting with noise. In 2002, the U.S. Navy admitted that their sonar was responsible for the stranding of at least six whales. In 2019, one of the major worries addressed by environmentalists and energy companies alike in the media was the noise that results from pile driving into bedrock to build the offshore wind farms, something that is extremely disruptive to nearby whales. Norwegian energy company Equinor developed a construction method known as gravity foundations in which they lower prefab cement foundations for the wind turbines rather than pile driving. Catherine Bowes from the National Wildlife Federation applauded Equinor's approach because, as she puts it, quote, whales are extremely sensitive to noise. So avoiding the extremely noisy process of pile driving is a big step. They could potentially take one really large threat to whales off the table. So people in the industry seem to be revealing what much of the media would rather you not think about. For companies and organizations in 2023 to dismiss that threat is a direct dismissal of what scientists and experts publicly already addressed four whole years ago. At this point, construction on wind farms that does not utilize the methods that Catherine Bowie's previously approved of are committing abuse towards whales. And yet, NOAA currently writes on their website that, quote, there is no scientific evidence that noise resulting from offshore wind site characterization surveys could potentially cause mortality of whales. Well, sorry, NOAA, I don't believe you. The other threat that the wind farms bring happens after construction is completed, once boat activity around the site increases during operational stages. The risk of ships striking whales in the area is perhaps the greatest threat of all. Increased activity concerns people like Alex Castitas, a member of the National Marine Fisheries Service's working group for marine mammal unusual mortality events. He recently remarked, this is about a pretty stressed marine environment that we are continuing to stress at increasing rates while really having a very poor understanding of what the ultimate impacts are. So if you're starting to feel a sense of outrage you're not alone. Clean Ocean Action, 40-year-old nonprofit whose mission is to defend the ocean, has staff cataloging the beached whales this year and has an activechange.org petition to demand independent investigation of whale deaths. And nearly 400,000 people have signed it as of this broadcast date. Now, I want to contrast these current whale deaths to the historical whaling industry, which peaked from the early 1800s to the late 1800s, the era of Melville's Moby Dick. Now, the mass killing of so many whales for their products did literally fuel human progress at a time before petroleum, coal, oil, kerosene, and related energy sources were known. But those were times when there was no regard to the lives of the whales, and certainly not for the health of the ocean's ecosystems, a concept which was unknown at the time. It was just the raw economics of that age, at a time before our enlightenment. But now, really, we know better. We, the people of the world, should act accordingly. But as in the case in many of our policy and cultural debates, I'm afraid there's never going to be a satisfactory resolution. Public outcry and possibly the voices of a few legislators may be the main tools of whale protectors. 
Alas, we are at a time in which green energy, the industry and the agencies, the lawmakers, the media, everyone is in the position of most power. So regrettably, I'm not optimistic about the fate of the whales and the ability to meaningfully slow down wind farm construction. The government has set its sights on building clean energy, and it's unlikely that they will change course for a few whales. Even though to us, every individual whale life lost is a tragedy for the government and energy companies constructing these wind farms, it seems they are willing to push their green energy agenda no matter the consequences. And yes, we certainly understand the push for clean energy, but cannot accept their destructive methods when it comes to realizing it. Pioneering conservationist William Leopold, in a letter to a friend, wrote that the situation is hopeless should not prevent us from doing our best. Well, the current situation may seem hopeless, but maybe it's not. Maybe we could make a difference. We must try. You probably know the musician Graham Nash. Now he's in his 80s. He penned and performed so many wonderful and iconic pop and rock songs many of us grew up with. And through his music, he's always been a strong voice for justice, peace, love, and environmental protection. He wrote a song titled, To the Last Whale, which he still performs. He has played versions of it with his fellow traveler, David Crosby, as well. It's a haunting tune and very sad. Part of the lyrics go, Over the years you swam the ocean following feelings of your own. Now you are washed up on the shoreline. I can see your body lie. It's a shame you have to die to put the shadow on our eye. I've not been able to find any accounts of Nash's opinion of the current offshore wind farm expansion, nor of the whale deaths we've been discussing. But I wonder what he would say if asked about the strong possibility that humpback whales are dying consequent to aggressive wind farm construction and deployment. It's a conundrum, to say the least. Whales versus wind farms. In an effort to provide a bit of optimism as we conclude, we at Animals Today would like to point out some great organizations that you could support in an effort to save whale lives in the midst of the massive struggles they are facing. Check out and sign the petition from Clean Ocean Action. Consider symbolically adopting a whale through the Whale and Dolphin Conservation or donate to the Wildlife Conservation Society's Ocean Giants Program that conducts research on how to minimize harm to our marine friends. We offer these as possible ways to spark or direct your own activism to try to help save our majestic and beloved whales.